Hello my dear friends, you are in the Military Summary channel and today we will discuss the situation in Ukraine on the 30th of March of 2024. There we have a lot of very interesting updates, so let's start. The Ukrainian sources and the Russian sources continue publishing details about the strikes that took place during the previous week. The Russians, I'll remind you, destroyed and damaged significant number of power plants all over the entire territory of Ukraine. For example, today we got the fresh satellite picture of the uh, power plant station in the thermal power plants in the city by the name of Ladizhn, it's Ladizhn power plant. So there are two icons, on the bottom is the icons of uh, the current situation and the north top um, picture is the uh, situation probably a few days ago. The only difference you might note is that the absence of smoke above the plant which confirms that the engines were stopped or even destroyed. The same story we can find in the vicinity of uh, Krivoy Rog to the south is Lenodolska power plant, the same story. Uh, this is the um, uh, old photo on the 24th of March we see uh, a smoke above the power plant and now this is the current situation we have to a uh, hole in the engine uh, part of the factory in complete absence of any work so the Russians destroying and of course this will cause the Ukrainians lots of problems obviously in the future now let's move to the situation on the ground we have a lot of very interesting updates, update, updates and details and the most important of them are coming from the area of Novomikhailovka we have already discussed that the Russians managed to break through the Ukrainian defense belt in the area, that the situation completely is uh, speeding up uh, the Russian progress every day at, at additional, let's say, square meters or square kilometers in the area. And uh, during the previous updates, we reported and we discussed that the Russians very likely managed to answer, first of all, managed to bypass the fields between the uh, farms on the northeastern part and to answer the residential area on the cent north central part and we have a lot of geolocations and updates from different sources different mappers confirmed this piece of information and uh, we have even geolocations uh, showing us the Russian attack when the Russians were stopped by the Ukrainians or minefields anyway today we continue receiving reports and according to information by uh, the let's say 7 8 p.m. of the local time on the 30th of March the Russians managed to bypass breakthrough and to bypass this area and to answer the western part of this residential area and basically to establish complete control over the territory. The situation for the Kenyans getting worse and worse and if you ask my opinion I would say that the battle for Novi Mikhailovka has already ended. Maybe the Russians have already established control and we still haven't received any updates about this because there are like clearing procedures or something like this. Maybe the Russians try to keep the situation as long as possible uh, forcing the Ukrainians to send additional reinforcements to the area or at least evacuation machines so just to increase the Ukrainian losses and when the Russians understand that the Ukrainians are not going to send additional additional troopers they will collapse complete the area completely will capture the territory for example uh, just few simple examples confirming by my words if you take a look at the western part of Novomikhailovka then you might note that there are two roads in the area the first road goes let's say from Konstantinovka then to Paraskovivka through Paraskovivka towards the uh, northern residential area that the Russians very likely managed to establish control over and the second supply road goes uh, through Konstantinovka right exactly to the western part of Novy Mikhailovka. So two roads and of course two roads sometimes is enough to hold the territory for a very long time but uh, just yesterday we discussed for example on this video we can see something was trying to uh, run away from Novy Mikhailovka from the southwestern part but the Russians established uh, a fire control a long time ago over this part of the road so that's why as a result of maybe artillery strike or mortar strike or anti tank missile strike something was destroyed and uh, the evacuation uh, didn't happen so this is the southern road so we can say and we can be 100 percent sure that russians do have fire control so no no even sh small possibilities for the ukrainians to answer this part when talking about the northern part where the russians advanced recently we have very interesting video this is the video on these uh, scenes, on this uh, short video, you can see how the Russians discovered, not discovered, how the Russians were bombing and attacking the Ukrainian bridge, the only bridge in the area that uh, connected in before, that used to connect uh, Konstantinovka, Paraskovivka with Novomikhailovka itself. This is not, of course, Dnieper River or something like this. It's a very short.
short a small very small river it's even not like a river i can't even uh, describe you what is this but even regarding the uh, let's say the size of the river there, there was a bridge this is the bridge exactly in the area and the russians have destroyed the bridge and on the, just let's return once again this is the bridge as a result of probably fab attack fab strike probably auto flame tower system the russians destroyed that small bridge or maybe something like a short dam or something like this and we see that the water start coming to the area so now the ukrainians lost possibilities to use the northern road so this area is not under fire control but there is no access any anymore to the northern part of nova mikhailovka so basically the ukrainians are blocked by this part by this line so now we see there is no chances there are no chances for the ukrainians to hold the area very long and i i am sure that maybe tomorrow maybe on monday maybe uh, during by the wednesday or something like this the russians will completely establish complete control over the village for example Syriac today reported that received news from the front uh, southwest of Donetsk. The situation of Ukrainian army is uh, deteriorating further in Novomikhailovka. The town could fall into Russian hands next week. I think much, much faster. Furthermore, as we discussed in the previous videos, the focus are moving further to the west. Another video from the central part of Konstantinovka. The Russians discovered some, well, let's say, warehouses or ammo depots in this part of the village. And as a result of artillery strike, that position was destroyed as you can see uh, Konstantinovka is already reduced to ruins as Novomikhailovka was reduced so there is there are already no barriers or, or any positions that Ukrainians can, can use uh, to concentrate forces or to hold the area as long as possible further to the west more attacks more fabs arrived in the area additional lancet strikes against the Ukrainian artillery positions like M777 Hovodza and of course multiple launch rocket systems uh, strikes against the Ukrainian concentrations in the vicinity of Lizavetovka. So the area is under full Russian control, no chances for the Ukrainians to hold, no chances to counter-attack, so it's about time to start thinking for the Ukrainians how to hold the village of Konstantinovka as long as possible. Because um, if Ukrainians lose Konstantinovka, and very likely they're going to lose it, then this is going to be the end of the south, of Donetsk direction, and the time Towns like Kurahova, like uh, Georgievka, like Maximilianovka, like Vadiana, like Uglidar, of course, would not fall automatically, but uh, the numbers of uh, the days of these uh, towns will be numbered, obviously. Uh, we have a certain activity of the Russians to the south of Uglidar. The Russians were bombing and attacking the Ukrainian forces with FPV drones, so nothing special, just a regular military routine. Uh, further to the west, we have uh, Vrimivka tactical bridgehead. We have certain Russian activity in the area. The Russians were bombing and attacking the Ukrainian forces on the southern edge of the village. And uh, this is, uh, let's say, not there is not, nothing special. The thing is, I'll remind you that just yesterday we discussed another Russian attack. Uh, the Russians were attacking this area using armored vehicles, uh, one tank and two personal carriers. Most of them were damaged and destroyed by the Ukrainian FPV drones. And on this uh, Few video we can see the damage and attack on the Russian uh, BTR 80. So after uh, the Russian the Ukrainians repelled Russian attack, also the Ukrainians not just repel, they also reveal their own positions. And now the Russians are working out these positions. And we have another FAP in the vicinity of Makarovka, another MO depot maybe some uh let's say fpv drone operators positions something that was uh, let's say discovered by the russians during the previous days offensive operation in the direction now we are moving back uh, to the north in direction of Georgievka. Uh, very important things are coming from the area and according to the Minister of Def not the Minister of Defense, according to the sources on the ground, the Russians managed to improve their positions inside of the village and basically to cut the village into few several uh, small parts like uh, the western, southern and the northwestern parts. Now the Russians will try to handle with every single part separately. According to the Russian movement, 
moments we can make conclusion that maybe the Russians are heading towards this industrial area that located on the farthest uh, southwestern part of the village so maybe this is the main Russian let's say objective in the area there's like a very powerful stronghold that the Russians can use for uh, deployment of forces and by taking this area then they will separately handle with the farms to the south and the trenches to the south and the same separately with the residential area to the north of the stronghold so the Russians continue advancing during the day they were uh, let's say a significant number of counter artillery duels uh, that ended of course uh, according to the videos and geolocations we received in Russian favor few more artillery systems uh, of western production were destroyed to the west of Georgievka and to the west of Krasnogorovka and lots of updates are coming from the line between Nivoyska and Pervomaiska. This morning we have already discussed in the previous update that the Russians managed to establish control over additional part of Pervomaiska, significant progress as you can see. And the thing is that uh, the Russians, not uh, th these gains uh, were made by the Russians not as, as a result of assault operation or, or bloody clashes inside of the village. The Ukrainians decided to fall back. The Ukrainians, as a result of pressure, as a result of FPV drones, strikes as a result of complete absence of absence of more or less reliable fortifications the Ukrainians decided to fall back from the area towards uh, Mitnitailova and this is this process uh, hasn't been ended finished yet so there are still regular forces in this part but the sources are saying that the Russians are pushing and the Russians currently in the uh, final block of Pervomaiska in this part and maybe tomorrow or the day after the Minister of Defense will provide us additional information about the area and we will color this territory in uh, let's say this part into red color which confirms complete russian control over the territory of course the ukrainians made this um, decided to fall back under very heavy russian uh, pressure and not because it's a very good decision we understand that uh, due to the fall back the ukrainians lost one of the biggest and one of the strongest area in on this direction and we are talking about this stronghold of course uh, ukrainians fall back fell back and the Ukrainian soldiers from these fortifications are forced uh, to fall back as well and very likely during the next um, maybe day or maybe a few days the Russians will establish complete control over this territory and this will allow the Russians to connect Nivoyska and Pirvomaiska together uh, to shorten the logistic to improve the logistic and to make everything very good for further offensive operation towards Karlovka water reserve and Kurahova or and uh, Krasnogor from the north interesting thing that once again the Ukrainians decided to fall back not because it's very smart the thing is that Ukrainians during the previous days made few attempts to counter-attack the Russians to stop down them or to slow down them at least a little bit and the main Ukrainian counter-attacks were conducted from this area let's say from the north towards Pervomaiska but uh, the Ukrainian attacks first were repelled first were discovered by the Russians the Russians managed to discover the Ukrainian plans uh, the number of and quantity of units they were planning to use and after uh, the Ukraine plans were discovered the Russians start bombing and attacking their armored vehicles tanks uh, one tank was destroyed on this video we can see uh, the consequences of FPV drone strikes uh, later the Russians cleared the territory with FPV drones and with um, let's say f different artillery weapons so the Ukrainian attack was repelled and Ukrainians having significant losses were forced to fall back and after this unsuccessful attempt to counter-attack the Russians uh, imp imp let's say increased the pressure and Ukrainians decided to fall back so this is the situation as you can see significant progress on the south Donetsk direction and uh, very soon we're going to be more and more interesting updates uh, now let's move to Berdychim the Russians still haven't managed to establish complete control over the territory but the forces of 47th mechanized brigade today published the video of how the Russian robots were operating in the area if you remember just yesterday we discussed that the Russians decided on this area to test their first robots uh, for uh, some some difficult task or difficult things um, for some reason uh, the robots were um, let's say were, weren't moving uh, maybe uh, the battery was low or maybe the Russians lost the signal anyway the Ukrainians after they discovered the robots start bombing and attacking them with FPV drones and both of them were destroyed at least one of them were destroyed and the second one and the second one probably also was destroyed 
so i believe that the next days we're going to see more and more videos of the same type uh, but regarding the losses regarding the situation anyway the russians have complete control over the main supply roads uh, to the village the ukrainians tried to redeploy some reinforcements and reserves to berdichi but everything was discovered by the russians and everything was destroying on the way from a to this line of combat contact about Semyonov konov updates and of course few more artillery systems of armed forces of ukraine were destroyed destroyed in the vicinity of Novosilovka Persia as a result of Krasnopol hit. So this is the situation on this direction. Now we are moving further to Bakhmut Artsumovsk area. Uh, the clashes in this area continues. We don't have any progress on the ground. The same thing that we see yesterday and the day before yesterday, the Russians are, were pummeling the eastern part of uh, Chosavyar, uh, the block by the name of Canal with FAPs, with artilleries and so on, without any attempts, without any let's say some to attack on the ground. The same story in Klishevka and in the vicinity of Klishevka. The Russians are clearing this area with FPV drones, reducing the Ukrainian, uh, let's say, possibilities, uh, logistic possibilities, trying to break the Ukrainian rotations and so on. So they're like uh, they are get they're making Ukrainians more and more exhausted in direction. And when the Ukrainians are going to be exhausted as much as possible, the Russians will start the ground operation. More details continue coming uh, from Raz. Dolovka area. As we discussed in the previous video, we got more details about the Russian attack. This is approximately the territory that was captured by the Russians as a result of attacks that took place during the previous few days. And today we got also additional videos of uh, how the Russians were bombing and attacking the Ukrainian positions to the south of Razdolovka. So this is another Tothlam Tower strikes right on the first buildings, on the first line, on the first street of the village. Few additional FPV drone bombing of Ukrainian infantry along the main road from the trenches on the edge positions with the city itself, village itself. And we have another uh, Tothlam Tower strikes between Fyodorovka and Vasyukovka. We have no doubts, we have no doubts that in the next five days very likely that within the next five days the russians will make first attempts to attack along the area that was along the areas that were cleared by the russians during the march so this is the first area that was cleared by the russians and this is the second area that was cleared by the russians during the march so these two areas will be under very heavy russian pressure and russian assaults and attacks the, the russians are going to use significant number of armored vehicles probably because because this is the severest southern direction and if the Russians are able to capture this territory then the situation is going to be very bad for the Ukrainians and we have another area of concentration of Russian fire along the railways this is going to be obviously uh, the third direction of Russian attack I can't tell you for sure whether the Russians are going to move on Bilogorovka once again due to significant losses that the Russians faced during the march maybe they will and maybe uh, the, uh, let's say, secondary direction of attack uh, is going to be Sporna towards Ivana Darevka. So the southern direction is going to be the priority for the Russians. And the main global priority is to capture Siversk, uh, let's say, by the beginning, maybe of um, June or something like this, which will allow the Russians to change their focus towards Slavyansk and to start the final battle of uh, Donetsk, uh, let's say, region, Slavyansk and Kramatorsk. Uh, when talking about South and Kupin's direction, we haven't received anything as well as we haven't received anything for the South North and Kupin's direction. We have a few more updates about the situation in the Zaporozhye direction and the Vremivka tactical bridgehead. Zaporozhye direction, another day, another Almur missile arrived in the village by the name of Malinovka. After four days of operational pause, the Russians renewed their attacks in the area. And we have another artillery bombing of Ukrainian positions in Gulai Port. Currently can't tell you for sure whether the Russians are going to start any ground operation, but maybe they will try to improve their positions between these two towns as they improved or were trying to improve during the big first part of March. Uh, Zaporozhye. The Russians managed to discover the Ukrainian positions in the northern part or the central part of Arekhov, the buildings, high-rise building with the concentration of Ukrainian personnel, and as a result of strikes, the buildings were pretty damaged. No, probably the building wasn't destroyed very likely that uh, the bomb arrived, arrived between 
at the buildings so no damage but anyway very likely that at least uh, some vehicles or tanks were probably damaged and destroyed uh Robotinum, the ukrainians uh, were attacking the russians in the south western part of the village and the russians were attacking the ukrainians along the main road of support 0408 between novodanilovka and Robotinum. on this video we can see another uh, vehicle that was moving heading to um, to Robotina, probably for evacuation purposes but uh, the yes, vehicle was damaged and destroyed uh, and uh, probably we have a few more updates political updates uh, from ukraine uh, we have reports uh, that uh, zelensky uh, fired his let's call them business partners lots of people were dismissed from their positions in ukraine and very interesting that a lot of them were sent abroad and uh, a lot of them were sent abroad for example danilov was sent to moldova and he was the secretary of the national security and now he is the ambassador in moldova which is not very good for for his career as i understand Zelensky continue asking uh, the uh, some help from the Western countries in the absence of the required number of shells. The front line will have to be reduced by withdrawing troops. Zelensky start blackmailing the Western countries, but he's not blackmailing. He's just telling the truth. You know that the Western countries was asking Zelensky always to tell truth. When Zelensky had significant losses in Zaporozhye and when he was trying to tell the Western countries, just don't worry, just give us more weapon, we will continue. The Western countries was uh, telling him to tell the truth not to lie and now when Zelensky start telling them the truth they'll tell him that Zelensky don't tell the truth uh, give us some lie saying that everything is stable and you can hold this line as long as possible the western politicals also have their own opinion about the situation for example Viktor Orban suggested that the best option for Ukraine would be to become a buffer zone between the west and Russia and to receive security guarantees I'm not sure that Zelensky is ready for this but of course I I agree that this is the best option for them the germany politicals are saying that the danger of ukraine losing the war is growing german german opposition leader um, friedrich merz said in an interview with weld i agree with uh, them that the situation is getting worse and worse for ukraine and we don't see any light uh, for ukraine in the this in this big tunnel and we see that the russians are getting closer and closer to the victory we're not saying about capturing of Ukraine but at least we are talking about capitulation from the Ukrainian side and that's it for today military summary channel reminds we condemn any violence in the world thank you for your watching subscribe to my channel put your likes join my patreon and have a good day bye bye